Hey, we're live. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so, so you saw the headline. It says, I'm completely sick and tired. Or actually, I don't remember if I wrote, like, everyone I live with is driving me nuts. <laughs> I probably should have had someone edit that before I posted. Uh, but in all sincerity, I have been looking forward to today's guest um, because he is the master of building connections. And so let me bring him on, and then I'll introduce him. Welcome, Craig. Hello. <laughs> so, Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. So um, as I posted this, I kind of tongue in cheek, you know, everyone I live with is driving me nuts or everyone I'm quarantined with is driving me nuts. <laughs> uh, you, live, you live with a lot of people. So I, I think you deserve to go a little nuts. We are we are technically over the limit. Like it, our our nuclear family is uh, we are over the limit of like people that you can have in a gathering. <laughs> so, that is true. I didn't even think about that. I'm waiting for them to shut me down, take me away. Like <laughs> I've, I've, I've reported myself. Nobody's coming to my rescue. Oh. Um, but it, but in all sincerity, so I, well, I do want to give you some props. So. I met you, I think it was three years ago. You came to, we, we did a training um, with a mutual friend, Corbin. Yes. And you came in and you you worked with myself and you worked with all of our agents and you introduced this idea of meaningful connections, right? Like truly not the superficial, like, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm great type of stuff. And it resonated with me a lot. And so then we had you come back and work with us again. And so as I was sitting in my office this past week and I was just contemplating like right now, how are you doing is such a loaded question. Would you agree? Oh, um, yes. But what a great question. It, it is a great question. And now in particular, it's a loaded question, right? Like. I, I say that like if I were to call somebody from my database and just say, oh, hey, how are you doing? They probably would just respond, you know, the typical, oh, I'm great. How are you doing? Right. And it's kind of the, the niceties of just getting through it. What I'm finding, though, right now is, you know, if I were to text you or call you and just say, hey, Craig, I know it's been a couple uh, a couple months since we've you know spoke. I just was curious. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I've been, I've been saying that I think this is the greatest time in the history of the world for us to connect uh, because everyone is so willing at this moment to share and to answer questions and to give you time. I mean, I've done some Zoom Zoom classes and Zoom things and greatest attendance I've ever had. I mean, because people are at home, people are captive audience, but to your point, uh, what a great opportunity to to go deep and 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 find out what's truly going on in their life. So I, I love it. I think it's great. So that got me thinking, right? Like, okay, I have this immense opportunity, really, like yeah. from my family that lives in Idaho, from my family that lives in Florida, you know, like I've got family all over the place and I've got friends from high school that have moved to different countries and, you know, we're kind of all over the place. I have this opportunity to have deeper connections because of the environment that we're in. People are, you know, more willing but then I also have this, this other part of, I could do some damage right now with the people that I'm quarantined with, <laughs> right? Like, yes, I'm, I'm doing great with my relatives in New Mexico. However, the people in the living room hate my guts. <laughs> and I thought I need to bring Craig on to you know, this interview because um, you are a TEDx speaker and you, you are... I truly say the the master, my mentor in terms of building meaningful connections. And I want you to help us understand a couple of things. You know, one, I know um, you have an amazing company called Connect 52. Can you tell us what what is Connect 52? Well, so Connect 52 in a very funny way is, is a bit of an accident. Um, I guess because we're on this, you can see this right here is the, is the is my education. My greatest education in life was becoming a mediator. And really, I became a mediator to help people in their relationships, help them have sex, success. I did not want to uh, mediate divorces. That was not my goal. I wanted to help people um, develop a tool set 
to have better relationships. And I mean, ironically, that's what we're talking about today. Uh, we're in tight quarters. We're, we're being, you know, we're self quarantined. And so, um, you know, but, but the whole idea, what, what maybe some people don't know about mediation is that it is, uh, it is unethical for a mediator to give advice. Uh, all I can do is ask questions. And so, I ended up uh, about six, seven, eight years ago, I ended up having some conflict in my life. Um, I, and I was at a family reunion and my father asked me to share with my siblings and my parents about mediation. And, and so I walked away from this meeting in which I shared with them what it's like to be a mediator. And, and it's like, a, it's this game that I play and it's a good game to play in business, which is, when I go to a restaurant, sometimes I'll ask the server, hey, do you mind playing a game? And they'll be, you know, inevitably they'll be like, hey, old man, I'll play your stupid game. Just give me a <laughs> minute. And so the name of the game, though, is, is tell me your life in 30 seconds. And, you know, and sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement. I say, uh, so you were born where? And then they just snowball and they start giving me some, some answers. Um, I listen to... I listen for what would maybe be interesting or what I would want to know more information on. I ask a couple more questions soon enough. They've given me two to three to five minutes of their time and I get the best service in the restaurant. So I walked away from this family moment, this, this meeting, and I realized I had conflict, which was that we were not really all that connected. Sure. You could say we loved each other. Sure. We'll get together at the obligatory holidays. Um, but I knew that we weren't really connected. I knew that we weren't really friends. And so I walked away from that and thought, can mediation, can the art of asking questions solve my conflict and help me get more connected to my family? So uh, I went home, uh, I wrote each of my siblings and my parents uh, an email in which I said, hey, I think this is where we're at as far as, as, as you know, our connection is concerned. A superficial level, right? Yeah, a superficial level. And no one no one was like, oh my gosh, no, are you kidding me? We're the, like the closest family <laughs> in the whole world. Um, and I said, well, what I want to do is I want to play Tell Me Your Life in 30 Seconds on a much longer version. I'm, I'm committing to asking one question a week for a year. And that's where Connect 52 comes in. There's 52 <laughs> weeks in a year. Um, and I just wanted to see in a year's time, if we just answered one question each week, we're all answering the same question, trying to gain empathy and understanding and, and into each other's lives. I mean, in my family, we'd all, everyone had gotten married. Everyone was had kids. We were, you know, we just weren't the tight knit family that we once were. And so that was, that was the idea. I just wanted to play, tell me your life in 30 seconds on a much longer version. And so, okay. The, the very first question I ever asked uh, was, you know, what are the top 10 highlights, you know, inspired by David Letterman, what are the top 10 highlights of your life? And everyone start or, or the people in my family who answered, um, it became very apparent immediately. I knew I was going to know some of their answers, but man, did I learn some things about each one of them from that very first question. And that's what got me just motivated and inspired to keep going and and it ended up lasting more than um, more than five years wow now did everybody participate in the beginning great question uh no and actually not in there i have two brothers and neither of them actually ever participated and but by saying they didn't participate that would be to say that they didn't read the answers and that's not true at all um and they did participate. One thing that I learned is that in our society today, and, and I, I mean, just to really jump in here real quick, I'm, there's a part of me, I, I feel bad for people who are losing their jobs. I feel bad for people who are getting sick, but there is a part of me that is so excited for what is happening because I think it truly, I think we might have just, this might just be something so difficult that we might actually learn the value of, of, of human connection and how we are connected as a family in the whole entire world. But no, my brother didn't, my brothers didn't participate in, in the sense of answering. But what I learned is that if they're, if these people are important enough to me, I need to invite them over and over and over and over again and do it differently and yeah. different ways. And, 
you know, I mean, it's like you, you've got all those kids. I mean, you can't just ask them to do it once. I mean, you got to ask them like a million times to get something done sometimes, you know? Oh, yeah. But also, I like what you said. Um, <clears throat> the per participation doesn't always look the same for everybody, right? Like some, you know, <clears throat> some people might jump in and, you know, I'm more inclined to respond with a video email or some people are, are more inclined to respond with something lengthy. Some people may never respond, but they read right? Like you said, yeah. like to read the, to, to read everybody's answers and to keep opening the email, right? Like, cause I know you sent this via email, opening the email on some level is participating because you are learning about your family. So it, it does look different. It does look different. Yeah. I mean, my little brother probably became one of my greatest fan, you know, the greatest fans of connect 52. Um, and that's kind of, you know, personally his, his wife during this time, his actual wife, uh, you know, my sister-in-law actually drowned and, and died in an accident. And, um, <sighs> and we created an account around her. So we did the exact same process, but just with one human being. And we invited all of her family and her friends and her coworkers in. And I mean, if you can just imagine, you know, two little boys who really never got the true opportunity to get to know their, their mother. Hell, I realized I didn't know her all that well, because when you when you ask a bunch of questions and you get the answers from potentially over a hundred different people, all of a sudden you have perspective as to who this human being was and what, what she, she meant to people in this world. And, and that's when connect 52 really became super cool for me is because, you know, you can, yeah, you just, you can just really get to know somebody on such a deeper level if you give it time. And, uh, okay, so we've got we've got time now. We've got some time. Well, I mean, I'm still working a lot, but <clears throat> we do have some time. So let's talk about connection. You know, what is connection? I know you've got five steps to meaningful connection. Break this down for us. Okay, we kind of already have done it in a way, but the the, the first step I would say is is the invitation. Um, it's kind of funny. I mean, all the social media that we use uh, out there, you you have to invite somebody to become your friend. And, and I think the same is true here. If you really want to take whatever relationship you have with somebody to a deeper level, invite them to do so. Uh, if you're a parent trying to connect with your family uh, or, your, or your children, then maybe individually or in a group, uh, let them know why this isn't so important to you. Invite them to the party. Um, when I talk about this, I'm like, you know, and then and that goes along with step two, which is really, um, setting you're, you're setting the expectation for where you want to go and I, and I oftentimes reference Steve Jobs and how when he introduced the i products to the world he he basically said this is your life without a without an i product this is your life with one and, and and that's what I did with my family I said hey this is where we're at it's uh, it's not horrible it's fine it's okay it's okay uh, we can continue to live here but I would like to see if we can't go here. And so I, I, think it's, I think it's a good idea in your invitation to decide where are you trying to go with this? Maybe explain why. Um, I also tell people that if you wanna do this, and, and right now, uh, yeah, I do like email a lot because people are used to long form answer on email than, than say social media. Um, I also say the person who's kind of being the one instigating the connection Ask the, the first couple of times you ask a question, also be prepared with your answer and set the okay. tone for how, but like set the tone for kind of the length, set the tone for how vulnerable are you going to get? And so that leads us into step number three is commit, um, commit to your tribe, commit to whoever these people are. I was so committed to doing this that I had said that I was going to ask and answer 52 questions whether anyone else participated at all because okay. one of the goals was, was for me to let my family know who I was. Um, we, have some, we have some differences as far as you know beliefs and, and certain things, but I just was finally saying, you know what, I'd like for you to know who I am. So commit, and that's probably the hardest part because if you don't have some, if you don't have some people participating the way you'd like them to, that can get frustrating or, or whatnot, but, and I'll explain why it, hopefully it doesn't because, um, 
Step four is, is the questions and, and listening. And this is where I did discover that technology is wonderful for you to be able to answer. Maybe, maybe this is an interesting idea for you and your kids right now is to be able to send them a question and say, think about this and, and get back to me with the answer, but almost through technology, uh, not everyone is comfortable doing this face-to-face -face thing, especially if you're going to get vulnerable or you're going to go deep. Yeah, it can be uncomfortable. I, I, I remember a few times answering question and like pounding away on the keyboard and hitting enter and be like, whoa, can I get that? <laughs> Hold on a second. Uh, everyone, go ahead, delete that one. Uh, that is not what I wanted to say. Like, you know, because you, you're, you're not faced with that person. Um, well, and you don't, I think we are also afraid of being judged, right? Like when you, I mean, I know when you were doing this, this was before Brene Brown really became popular. And we talked about the power of vulnerability and, you know, I've got on here, daring greatly, dare to lead, you know, some of my, I mean, right. Like, and, yeah. and by the way, when I read, if you don't know who Brene Brown is, she's absolutely incredible. She's two of the most um, viewed Ted talks ever, but uh, that messed me up for a minute because of, of getting that vulnerable. But you know, that whole thing of putting that out there. And if it's your family feeling judged, if it's, you know, what if they don't like me anymore? Because I don't care for the, you know, the green jello with carrots. And that's our, you know, great grandma's family tradition. And now Christy's ruined the whole Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. I mean, we could, we could talk about this forever. I mean, it has come to my understanding that eventually the value of Connect 52 was the questions I am going to tell everybody the secret to to at least my success in was was asking questions that uh, that just happened to me in the in the week. I mean, right now, I, I if people want to reach out to me and connect with me and give me their email address, I send out a weekly question via email to to my entire database. And this year was dedicated to connecting with self. And that's no matter whether you're trying to connect with family, no matter whether you're trying to connect with your kids. Or, or your spouse. Um, ultimately, the irony behind the whole thing is, is what I and, and and the design is, is that you get connected to who you are. Every question that is asked is you're answering it for who you are. And so, um, so like right now, most of my questions for the last you know several weeks, obviously, have been about how are you dealing with this? How what what are you learning? Um, what is wonderful about it? What is, what is challenging? Um, and so, yeah, number four would be ask questions and listen. And then the last one, five is, uh, experiment with vulnerability and empathy. And, um, yeah, just, you know, what I learned is the deeper that I went, the deeper that everybody else went. And cause you set the tone. You made I, it okay. Yeah. Okay. I, and if, and if you want more from somebody, then you got to be willing to give more. And so, yeah, those are the five, those are the five steps that I've just discovered over the last eight years of kind of doing this that seem to be consistent, um, you know, in, in life. And, and I mean, you know, in this industry, it's like, you know, we, we've got to invite people to connect. And right now, what an opportunity. I mean, what you're doing, I, I, I know we kind of talked about this uh before but i just think what you are doing you are providing so much value and and you are you just went out and created it you, you created an opportunity to share valuable information to your database to your sphere of influence to the people that you care most about i just i applaud you i think it's incredible well so what he's referring to is we were talking a little bit beforehand and <clears throat> i told him i did not sign up for this and then i said a swear word and if you know me, I don't swear very often. <laughs> and, 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 and I knew, I knew I had that I wasn't alone. There had to be someone else out there that, um, <laughs> that just was like, you know what, this sucks. Like one, I, I, so I came into my office for the first time in three weeks and it's a private office. So there's nobody else here, but, um, I've been working from home because of homeschooling and things like that. And I came here and I wanted to hug my wall, my bookcase, my desk. I was like, I've missed you all so much. I didn't sign up for this to homeschool and to do all this stuff. And so this idea of these, you know, these interviews that I'm doing on our Facebook page is because I want 
for the for the men and women out there right now who are saying, okay, this is really hard. Whether you have kids or not, what we're going through is hard. And I know a lot of people, I'm so blessed. I was actually thinking about this in preparation for our interview. Um, right before I was able to connect one of my friends, her, her friend is moving from Germany um, to Arizona and it's on the West side and I don't, I don't cover the West side, but I have a really good friend that does. And I was able to connect them and I said, oh my gosh, you've got to do this. And then yesterday I had another friend in Texas who's like, hey, do you service Bullhead City? And I said, no, but I know an amazing, I know an amazing person there. And I, I love connecting people. Yeah. But again, let's come back to my fear and why Craig is here is I don't want my kids, right? So I, the, I, I'm fully being vulnerable with you guys that um, luckily Meryl and I have been married 15 years and I love him a lot. We will not be getting divorced because of being quarantined all this time together. Um, and we work together too. So that's a double whammy, but it's hard. Like I love him a lot and he sometimes annoys the heck out of me. I love my kids. I, you know, all I, I waited for till I was 32 to have kids in my life. Like I wanted children. I had to like work really hard to get children. I want to run away. Like I almost got in my car yesterday and just said, I don't care. Like I just got to get out of here. So yeah. that's why, that's why we're doing this is that um, I want everybody out there who says, Hey, this is hard. I need some strategies. I need some tools. But then also the very serious part, you know, Craig, like, how should we be connecting right now during you know all of that's going on right now? What should be our focus for connection and how can we connect? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because you've got two situations in which, you know, inside your home and then obviously all the people outside of your home. And I think you're right outside of the home. I think there's a huge opportunity just to ask people how they're doing, how they're feeling um, and, and, and connect. I, I think what's so awesome about it, say an interview is you know you prepare with questions that are going to be thoughtful and engaging and and i have just never been ashamed of uh, in fact you know everybody goes oh how do you come up with these questions well sometimes before an event uh or and, and it's funny because i right here i have one for real estate i mean i, I know not, not everyone listening is it is necessarily in in real estate but i just one day I asked myself the question, what questions would a real estate agent need to ask me in order to help find me the right house, find me a great house? So I created this menu for real estate agents to then just, you know, if you just ask these questions of somebody, you're going to probably know what house to find. And they're not questions like how many bedrooms do you want and how many bathrooms do you want? These are questions like one of my favorite, <clears throat> what is your favorite home? What is your favorite room of the house and why? If I told somebody my favorite room of the house and why, they would at least have a they'd have a 90% understanding of what it is that I'm looking for. And it's all based on like one event a year, a Christmas party that I like to host and throw and 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 have and Oh, so you're the one that has to have like a 10-foot tree? Like <laughs> I mean, it's more about the kitchen and the two living spaces okay. and it's all wide open and we can all have a really great time and and, you know, because that's the gift that I want to give and that I want to receive from all my friends is to, is a gathering, a get together. And so um, <clears throat> and as we were been talking, I thought, you know, maybe this is an opportunity at home to almost like connect with people on this level of, you know, having them come up with some questions. I mean, what an opportunity. What I learned in Connect 52, one thing is, is that my parents were children and that they were teenagers because certain questions that were asked, they told stories about their life. And so I'm kind of almost wondering if this just isn't an opportunity, maybe a, a menu could be created for the family. Talk to us about a menu. So uh, for those of you, who, for, for the viewers who are not familiar with a, a menu, a connection menu, explain to us where, and, and I'll post where you can find them, but okay. talk to us about a menu. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna create one very specifically for you and your viewers and, and brand it and, and, and whatever, and maybe it'll help um, at home. But the, the connection menu, it really, it started, um, it was a few years into the Connect 52 process. I, I love my friends, I love my family. What I realized is that whenever we would get together, people would kind of just gather with the people that they knew. And I thought, wow, okay. what if, what if 
you know, this person knew that person. And what if, oh my gosh, there's just so many people here. And so I hosted my 40, this was several years ago. I hosted my 41st birthday. I invited everybody, catered the whole thing. Uh, everyone showed up. They're doing their mingling thing. They're, they're talking to people, having their superficial conversations, if you will. And then um, I gathered everybody's attention and said, hey, um, you're actually he not here tonight to celebrate my birthday. You're here to connect with somebody that you do not already know. Which immediately my oldest brother who attended, I thought he was going to punch me and run. <laughs> I mean, what you sign me up for? Exactly. I mean, because I kind of had him cornered. Now, what I had done, though, coming from the restaurant, I, I have a little bit of a restaurant background. I, I created this menu of questions to look a lot like a, a menu in a restaurant that okay. you'd have appetizing questions and you'd have entree questions and you'd even have funny fun or funny dessert questions. And so I just told everybody, hey, go find somebody in the room you don't know very well. And you can use the questions that I provided and totally blame me. I always lie. I'd say, we're going to totally blame me. <laughs> yeah, blame me. I mean, go up to somebody and be like, hey, I've got to ask you a couple of questions because this guy, this bald guy is making us do this. Totally fine by me. And I always lie a little bit too, which is I say, hey, we're going to do this for 15 minutes. It never lasts 15 minutes. <laughs> It never lasts 15 Always minutes. Always like 45 minutes to an hour. But eventually I have to ask people to like stop. I mean, it's crazy what will happen because people will go over. So even my older brother, uh, one of my friends found there him. There we go. Oh, yeah. This was my, this was an Easter menu. So I, I usually post on my social media. I usually post like um, something to, you know, for the, the, the holidays. Um yeah, exactly. There's there's a menu there. There's one for Thanksgiving and Christmas. And I've, I've helped people celebrate their 50th uh, birthdays before. And so, you know, here's all these strangers. They're getting together wanting to celebrate this person who's turning 50 or whatever the age is. We don't know each other. And so then yeah, you, would, you just you have a menu of questions to ask. And so I think this could be a fun activity at home um, to get the kids involved in and maybe they all go sit one-on-one -on -one with somebody and, and, and interact and engage and, and get to know them. And, um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, I asked you earlier, are you finding it uh, difficult for one-on-one -on -one time? And I think, yeah. again, I know that many of you parents reward children with one-on-one -on -one time, like a date night or something like that. I, I, I know that's we've done, a, we've done. Yeah. We've done that before. And maybe right now, um, date night consists of one or two kids at a time, in your case, um, <laughs> getting to come in and watch a movie with you. I don't know. I mean, really, you, you, the irony is you're talking to a guy who connects, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not a guy who has kids. So um, this is, this is you, you've definitely challenged me here. But um, yeah, I mean, historically, I just don't think we're – I mean, I hope we never get this opportunity again, or at least not for another yeah. several hundred years. But um, but this is a unique opportunity. I think your question, and somebody else I, I follow posed this, is a year from now, what do you want to look back on and say, I, I did or we experienced in this time? And I do think that there is an opportunity to do some one-on-one -on -one with your kids and you know, and obviously we're talking in your case, kids that are fairly young, they're still at home, but man, for families that are. But it is an opportunity to, to expand on what you're saying. Like I, I joked, you know, tongue in cheek, I didn't sign up for this, right? Like I, um, you know, I, <laughs> so again, I had kids when I was 32, I was blessed to have three kids overnight, right? So I, I literally became a parent overnight to three kids. And um, in my mind, I had this most amazing, I hope she's watching, um, Mary Moore. She was my teacher and she was the ideal parent for me. Like um, she was, she's just in my mind, she was the Mary Poppins mom. Okay. And I loved her so much. So when in my head, I was like, that's the mom. I want to be right. Like I want to be, I mean, she crafts all the time. We did a craft every day. We were always doing something fun. She was always engaged. We were reading. We just did all these things. And so I kind of put her on this pedestal in my head that I wanted to be that mom. Well, then I became a mom and I realized that I don't like messes. 
<laughs> so I wasn't the I wasn't the homeschool type of mom. I wasn't the because um, I'd already had an established career and I kind of knew that's that's what I enjoyed doing. But I also didn't love the mess, you know, of crafting and things like that. Um, I love playing games with my kids. I love reading with my kids. So there were parts that I was able to bring in. So I, I joke and say I didn't sign up for this. But at the same time, I realized what an amazing opportunity. I, whether I like it or not, the honeymoon's over. The novelty of, you know, being in quarantine and getting to do all these things, that's over. This is my life until they go back to school. I have an opportunity to connect with my kids in a way like I got to be your first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, <laughs> seventh grade, eighth grade, and 11th grade teacher, oh. you know, for the last quarter, right? Like, again, I hope it never happens again, but yeah. I do have an opportunity to create something memorable, something special. Like I need to decide how I show up. Okay, two ideas came to mind while you were talking, um, especially for parents in your, in your situation. So one idea is take a, a list of questions and that I've seen this done before where you, you ask a bunch of questions like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, what do you, you know, there, there's all these kind of questions. You can even Google them, look them up. It's questions for kids. I know that some people do them annually. Like every year they ask the same set of questions. They kind of keep okay. them in a journal yeah. and, and, and then just like, oh, look how you evolved as a, as a child. So maybe this is an opportunity to start that. Maybe this is just an opportunity to ask some of those questions. And then again, a year from now, you, you look back on it. Now, having that in mind, this whole look back on things a year from now, um, do I, I thought about the idea of doing a, I mean, this doesn't have really a whole lot to do with questions other than it could. You, all the kids could write down their answers to questions and you put them inside of a, a tin and you go bury it in the backyard. and, and A time capsule. A time capsule. Thank you. Man, I, that was not coming to my brain. Um, but yeah, do get them involved in the, the that the fact that this is something so historic it is. For, for this to have never really ever happened on globally like this, because we're such a global world now. I mean, nothing like this has ever, ever happened and we're, we're living through it. And what a time to be able to, and it, and it kind of goes to like really what my favorite question. I mean, if, I was going to be my question for you. What is your favorite connection question? I've been dying to know. Well, so it sound, it'll sound so simple in the, at the end of the day. And yet I don't believe it's a question that gets asked of people at all, which is what is it like to be you? And, you know, it is kind of like asking, how are you doing or, or, or how, you know, but, and I'll, I'll give a little story on this one because I, well, I lived back East when I first started connect 52 and one of my nieces uh, came back to stay with me for uh, a week or so. And I had promised all my siblings that if they sent it, if they paid for a child to fly <laughs> back there, I would, I would take them to New York. Is I, that still open? No. <laughs> no. No, it's not. I'll be a sibling. I'll participate. <laughs> well, I would have loved for you have, to have come back. I mean, we would have gone to Manhattan. We would have gone to D.C. We would have had a blast. And we would have never stopped talking for a whole week. And that's what I thought was going to happen because she's really – she was – I think she was about a senior in high school. She was really smart, well-read, very brilliant. And I thought, oh, my gosh, this is going to be such a fun time connecting with my niece and Anyway, it was horrible. I mean, it was just the worst experience ever. I, I, I was so excited for her to leave. And we're, we're, we're having lunch at Chipotle and she's about to go. And literally out of frustration, I just say, what is it like to be you? Like, oh my gosh, tell me something. Give me something. And she immediately starts to bawl. And she expressed to me... Uh, and, and for the first time in my life, I probably shut up and listened. And she just expressed to me how frustrated she was and how uh, filled with anxiety she was over uh, not knowing whether she was going to get a scholarship to college because she felt that if she didn't get a scholarship, she wasn't going to be going and that that was going to have a major impact on her life. And, you know, I listened. I mean, yes, I wanted to interject right away, but I listened. And then I, I said, you know what? I go, I know that you don't know this. It's obvious to me that you don't know this, but you're 
plus, 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 plus is not only going to get you one scholarship, it's going to get you lots of offers for scholarships. Now, you may not believe me, but you might want to go talk to some counselors or whatever and, and, and get some understanding. But, you know, it all started there. And that is the, the irony of asking this question is I know everyone's answer. Uh, I know that everyone has these really difficult times they've gone through in life. And I know everyone has won the big game at some point in time in their life. But what I don't know is those stories. I don't know the intimate details of what makes you, you. And that's why, and, and I've, I've encouraged a lot of parents over the years, like this is a very valuable question. When, when I, I see all too often when kids come home from school, it's like, hey, how was school? And, how and, was your day? And, yeah, how was your day? Most of the time the answer is, it was great, fine, you know, whatever. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> you feel obligated to ask. They're annoyed that we've asked. <laughs> but I, I have seen some success. I'm not saying all the time with just, um, you know, when, when you can kind of ask it in this way of, of what was it like to be you today? Or what was it like to be you at the soccer game? Or then it's like, oh, well, it was really fun or it was hard or it was difficult. And so it, it's when I meet people, I tend to say, you know, what? What is it like to be you? Um, because then it's like, wait, wait a second. You didn't ask, what do I do? You didn't ask how I'm feeling exactly. It's like, what is it like to be you? And I, I, I the more I've asked, it's it, the such more a I pattern realize. interrupt. It's, it's such a great pattern interrupt because it really, it's not something that I've never been asked that question. So it's not something that I have like a um, an auto response to, right? Like. Right. It, we have the, again, we, I call them niceties or that superficial level conversation. We just, the auto responses of, you know, how are you doing? Like, you know, just, it comes off. It's kind of like when you go into a store and you know that you're going to buy something, they come up to you and they say, oh, can I help you? And what do you say? It's that automatic no. You say, oh no, I'm just looking. Yeah, Even if you're going to buy something, you know, you say no. But what I like about that question is because I can't give you the automatic no. I can't give you the auto, auto response, right? Which is going to be very superficial because um, that's the safe zone. But here's the other thing, Craig, that I think I've never thought about this, but I'm making the connections from some of the interviews that I did with some of the Empower Educational Consultants in the past couple of weeks. Yeah. My friend Sue Yoakum said, all kids want two things. They want a voice. They want to be heard and they want choice. Whether they are five, you know, in pre-K kinder, or they're 18, senior in high school, they want voice to be heard and choice. And so often as a parent, I'm very guilty of this. And, and I also say that I'm still totally green. I've only been a parent for 10 years. This year will be my 11th year. So I finally have more years parenting than I do children. So that's a win, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, and, and I've, and I tell my kids that all the time. I said, you know, I'm still learning. Like, you know, I'm going to make mistakes, but I don't stop and put myself in, in my, you know, seventh grade daughter's shoes who she doesn't love technology and now she's forced to do school online. And if I would stop and say, Hey, Sarah, tell me, what was it like, for, you know, to be you today doing homeschool? It yeah. would open up so much more than the superficial. Well, I love that because I, I, I eventually I hired some PhDs to help me out with some questions, you know, see if we could kind of get a sequence of questions that would end up kind of having a result. But Ultimately, what all these PhD uh, individuals came back to and said, Craig, you, you've built something in which somebody can be seen and heard, and that is the key to trust. Uh, ah, yes. Is feeling seen and heard. And so, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, um, there's a book out there by a gentleman by the name of Roman Krishnerik. It's called Empathy. And... Roman Krishnerik and his team. How do you spell that? <laughs> they are, oh, man, we'll, it's, it's, we'll go in later and we'll post it. Yeah. <laughs> Empathy is the name of the book. And then if you type in Roman and K-R-Y, hopefully the rest will follow. But, okay. Okay. Um, I reached out to him because I loved his book. And one of the, one of the experiments that he and his team created and, and, and did, and they're still out there doing it, 
they they developed they created a giant shoebox. I mean, it's a big enough shoebox. It's like you can walk into it. Okay. And so you walk into this shoebox, and when you walk in, they hand you a, a shoebox. They they tell you you tell them what size shoes you wear, and then they bring you a a, a shoebox with shoes in it and headphones. And the idea is, is that you put on those shoes and put on the headphones, and you go on a mile long walk listening to the story of the person whose shoes you're wearing. Oh, and wow. When Roman and I talked, he goes, Craig, you, we, we've done the same thing. We've just done it in different ways. You, you've been on a five-year walk with your siblings. And I think it's one of the things, and again, I, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but one of the things that I think you and, and parents out there might value the most, and, and it all happened by accident, what we didn't know we were doing is we created one of the greatest histories ever written about my family. I was curious about that, it, how how to document this, because I know you guys did yours via email, um, but I yeah. do see massive value for, you mentioned your sister-in-law and her children, right? And her yeah. passing and her children. What an incredible gift for them to see their mom from the perspective of people she went to church with and people she worked with and, and high school friends and, right, and relatives, like this whole 360 view of their mom. And now for, you know, for our kids to, you know, I think particularly for my kids. So let's talk about that documenting. So I know it's happening by accident, by accident right now because of the pandemic. But, you know, do you have any recommendations? Absolutely. What I would do, I mean, if I could go back and make it so much easier on myself, I mean. Thank you, Christine. She she posted for us. I just put it up there. (laughs) Yes. See, that is not easy. Um, I would. I would go in and um, I would ask the question via email. I would, you know, you guys can reply all, send the answers. Whoever is kind of leading the charge on this, what I would say is create a separate Google Doc and then you take the the question each week and then you copy and paste everyone's answers into underneath that question. Reason being is yes, um, and ideally in the future when we create some software to help all this happen, you'll you hopefully in the future you'll be able to hit just print and it'll print you out a, a book but for right now yes i would just copy and paste those over into a google doc because the information is unbelievably valuable um and, and we never sent out to do that i mean you know i mean obviously most people know about ancestry.com and and we joke around at connect 52 about ancestry.com is 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 about connecting with the living and potentially the dead obviously but um you know, I mean, think about that. I mean, you could you could do a Connect 52 with a grandparent right now and all the people living could share stories. And and, and again, when it's only one question a week, it, it doesn't it's seem overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. I had one sister who was working a ton and she'd only she'd like she'd answer like three questions at a time because she she'd get a little bit behind or whatever. And then one night she'd find herself available to to be able to answer and she'd answer a bunch at a time. But um I mean, we haven't really discussed this, but it's, you know, like my mother, for example, (laughs) I mean, she's, she's in her late seventies now, but I mean, one of the questions one week was inspired by what my sister, and she said, if you were to get a tattoo on your body, what, what would it be? And where would you put it? And because you've got a conservative family, part of of the family is very conservative. (laughs) Not one of us has a tattoo. I mean, I don't know how that's even possible, but not one of us has a tattoo. So very funny question, not necessarily like, and it was fun to eventually include the family and asking questions because other types of questions got asked. I always go like super deep, like everyone's going to like bust out crying and stuff like that. But so my mom answers like, I would get one of those tattoos on the small of my back. And my (laughs) sisters immediately are like, you'd get a tramp stamp. And she's like, well, that's what they're called. And that's what I would get. And so you just learn who who people are and and you probably never like you said something in the beginning of the interview said i saw i learned that my parents were kids and they were teenagers right like we don't think of our parents often as a teenager as a youth right and or as somebody who thinks about right because like you said at that point you know your mom's in her 70s so she's probably not going to go get that tramp stamp but it's hilarious (laughs) that, you know, you learn that about her and that's, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, another question that just absolutely shocked me, blew me out of the water was uh, 
again, not one that I valued at first. Uh, I asked by my sister-in-law, she, she said, what is, what was your favorite toy growing up as a kid? And I just, I was like, oh, what does that have to do with us connecting and, and whatever? And again, my mom answered with a story about a stuffed animal um, that was really important to her. It was named Shmoo. And this was way before Barbies even existed. And not one person in my family had ever heard about this. Not, not even my father, who's been married to her for over 50 years, had known about this stuffed animal. And so, you know, what valuable content. I, I mean, when I sat down to write my answer to that question, and again, it goes to show that really who you're connecting with is yourself. So I sat down feeling rather obligated to answer and it's my game, right? You know, so I had to go get a picture book and I was looking through this picture book and I came across this image of me and my little brother playing in a sandbox in this, at this home in holiday, Utah, where we grew up. And I was like, Oh my gosh, that has to be like my favorite toy growing up as a kid is that sandbox. And so I, I started writing about the sandbox and then I found another picture of me playing cap guns with my brother. And I was like, Oh my gosh, we used to beg my mother for cap guns. And, uh, and we do any chore almost to, to get a cap gun. And so I said, Oh, it must be the cap guns. And then I found a picture of me playing constructs with my brother, which was a form of Lego back in the day. Yeah. Oh, that had to be it. And, and it was, a page and a half later that I realized, you know, and I wrote, I think my favorite toy growing up in the whole entire world was my brother, Tommy. And that is definitely something I could not tell you I would have ever written. Um, I, and that really helped me realize that I needed to keep inviting him because we have lost a connection somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, and one of the things, I mean, going back to the whole commitment thing, there's a, there's a great article I'll have to share with you and, and maybe you can post about it. It's, um, it's about, uh, this individual who lost his leg in, in a boating accident as a, as a young child uh, way back in the day when the, when the leg looked like kind of a fake leg, it looked like a plastic leg. And he was basically told by family and doctors like, this is the, you're going to have to get used to this. This is going to be the rest of your life. And he asked a series of three questions over and over again, uh, and I don't have them on, right on the top of my mind, but they're very simple. Uh, and, and basically what he did is he just kept on challenging, challenging himself to create something better. And he ultimately, he ends up being the creator of the blade that we've seen in the Olympics, oh, yeah. and that we've seen at the top of Everest and so forth and so on. And But one of the things that he points out in this thing is, is that all too often in business and in life, we make problems be a we problem. How are we going to solve this? And he talked about that, you know, sometimes you need to make it an I. What are you, what, are, what am I willing to do? And, and so I talk about that. Like I, it was my problem. It's not my parents' problem. It wasn't my siblings' problem that we weren't connected. It was my problem. And what was I willing to do to fix it? I was willing to ask one question a week, answer it, and do it for a very long period of time. It resulted in in being best friends with my little sister. It resulted in having a greater understanding of my siblings. And so, yeah, I think you, you got to take some ownership of whatever where whatever the relationship is. Take ownership for it, and then and then basically ask the question: What what am I willing to do? What can I do to attempt to make it better? I mean, if you could see the prototypes of his of, of these legs that he attempted to build. Oh my gosh. I mean, out of wood and nails and all kinds of things. It's ridiculous. He was failing forward. <laughs> he was failing forward as fast as he possibly could. And so, you know, in this attempt to connect, and, and I and I just wanted to say this to you and to anyone else who's out there, I mean, be patient. And I'm not a doctor, so but be patient with yourself during this time. I mean, I think we have to be let's laugh at it. I mean, what a ridiculous scenario we are dealing with. And you know, you were telling me earlier, I mean, about saying sorry faster and, yep. you know, let's laugh. Let's, let's say we're sorry faster. Let's, um, let's be patient with, you know, I mean, let's be patient with one another, but let's be patient with ourselves and, Have and some grace with yourself and, and fail forward fast on connecting. I mean, I, I think the hardest people in the whole world are, are to connect with children. I mean, there's, I don't even know why you guys have them. They're so ungrateful for all that you do. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. 
Yeah, I was, tell, I was telling Craig. I think they're crazy. I was telling Craig, I said, I, you know, I'm very uh, blessed to be quarantined with 15 people and tortured to be quarantined with 15 people. <laughs> you know, there, there's two sides of the spectrum. And um, so I, what I'm taking away from this interview, which I've loved, by the way, um, I, took a, I took a full page of notes and um, is just start somewhere, right? Yeah. Start somewhere. And that could be a question a week. It could, you know, whatever it looks like, but start somewhere and, you know, just be curious. Yeah, be an, inter be an interviewer, do what you're doing. I mean, that's what's so brilliant about this. I mean, what you're doing and what you're providing to people. And, you know, I, again, industry related, I've been telling people to do something similar to this with their, with their lender. And, communicate and share and what an opportunity right now to let people know who you are. I, I did a funny thing. I, I would love to see this almost at your house. I did a funny thing where the other day I, I showed that I could do a home tour and I, <laughs> did, I did my own home, I, I, my own apartment. It, it took all of about five minutes to do. But one of the things is, is I, I was able to point out certain things in my home and then share kind of who I am. Uh, because one of the, I mean, in connecting, really, it's not just about asking questions. It's about also divulging information about who you are. Setting uh, the tone. Yeah. Setting the tone. And I have discovered, man, the more, the more willing I am to throw myself on the sword, be vulnerable, the more they're just like, and maybe that's, maybe that's kind of been my thing. I, there's nothing I'm not willing to talk about and, and more, I, I get the craziest stories ever told to me. And, uh, and I, I just appreciate it. I value it. I, I love it. So anyway, thank you so much for this opportunity. This has been a, a delight. And I, I just, I, I have a feeling we're going to have to do another one. We're, we're just going to have to have a follow up because it, it was, it was too good. But, uh, um, you can see here, Craig L. Oborn, um, for your, your, uh, Instagram handle or at connect 52. So you can see some of those menus. And as soon as we get the big helper menu for COVID-19, <laughs> we'll yeah. make sure to post that. Um, my, my message to you guys. And the reason I wanted Craig to be with us today is, that um, we do have a unique opportunity right now. And um, if you are quarantined with somebody, or even if you're not quarantined with somebody, you can you can take the challenge that Craig did and you know emailing his family members. This is a great time to learn something new about someone, right? Learn something new and have a meaningful connection that's not that superficial. I love that. What is it like to be you? I think that's gonna be the question that I lead with this week. Um, because I really want to know what it's like to be my seven-year-old daughter. What is it like for her right now? Right? Like, what's the most important thing? What's her perspective? So that's my challenge to you guys. Um, if you have questions, reach out to Craig. I'm going to post um, the link to his TEDx talk. It's definitely worth your guys' time. And again, Craig, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And I'm going to just throw in one last thing because you inspired my my thought on this. Marco Polo. If you if you don't oh, yes. if you don't use Marco Polo or you don't know anything about it, I was fortunate enough to meet the creators of it and, and their reason for building it is, is so inspirational. They're from Europe, different countries, so they have parents in different countries. They they had some children, so so it was just impossible to ever coordinate a time in which everyone could watch the video. So they re they made this app in which you can record a video and people can watch it at their own convenience. And even though I don't think it's the best way of doing what I'm talking about, Connect 52, it might be a great way to start it and to get people used to the idea. And so, um, you know, you could use Marco Polo because it does record all of your videos and you could really do something fun with that too. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there because some people like your stuff, love video. So, Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you showing up today. Hey, thank you. Anytime. Bye-bye, guys. Oh, okay.